I'm uh, Philip Marsden, and my latest book is called The Summer Isles, A Voyage of the Imagination, and it charts a journey, a journey by sea up the west coast of Ireland and Scotland. This book had been cooking up, yes, a long, a long time, um, really. I mean, like all books, they sort of, you, you finish one and then you, 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 you sort of wait for the next thing to come and you realise that there's sort of threads that lead back through your life in, in, in this term, in this instance it meant sort of revisiting memories from the north of Scotland. I spent several summers up with my aunt and uncle in Sutherland and we, um, my, my, they just moved up there, they used to be farmers in Essex and my aunt particularly was a, was a very keen walker and we, we spent the first couple of summers exploring the, um, the sort of mountains of the northwest highlands which are which are extraordinary in their own right but when you get up the top of them you look out over the minch and see this extraordinary sort of collection of small islands the summer isles and we, we tried to get there and tried to um to get that by boat but, but, but we never managed and it became a sort of, for me a sort of one of those places that you you sort of want to get to uh, you never can quite reach and the and the image of a of a scattering of islands in this sort of silvery waters of the Minch, just out of reach, was the sort of presiding uh, and driving force behind the, behind the book in its early stages anyway. I'm here in, in the, the south of Cornwall on the banks of the Upper Fowl, um, where I've lived for about 10 years or so. And it's where I live and work with my, with my family and I pretend to, to be a sort of farmer in that, in that we've got a small bit of land which I put over to um, to woodland and we're trying to sort of promote both trees and also biodiversity and, and um, store the land to its, its pre-agricultural finery. The great thing about living in Cornwall is that there's always stuff to do outside um, and it being the spring we've, we've managed to do a good deal of outdoor stuff so it's, it's, it's been fine actually. I mean it's, it, it's <laughs> Enforced isolation isn't that much different from a, a writer's um, lot, anyway. So it's it's been it's been fine. I found it productive. Done lots of really good reading and, and caught up. And there's something about locking into a, a, a routine and a sort of rhythm, where if you don't have to go anywhere, you just the days pass and you and you sort of lock into them. And it's it's great. It's been it's been fine. I mean, there've been there've, there've been problems. We actually did have the virus. All of us, we think. Um, it's weird. I don't miss it that much. As you miss not having smell. It's 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 and, and taste. You can sweet things and bitter things, and a certain amount of flavour comes through through those things. But the sort of more subtle flavours um, you can't and, and smells you can't you can't pick up really. I've been sniffing various flowers to no, to no end. There was a sort of pat program of, of festivals in in the UK and in Ireland. Uh, and they're just not happening. I mean, I, I, I feel for, well, for you and all the festival organizers who had to sort of keep the thing running. It, it, it's, it's sad having events um, canceled and not having that sort of contact, which, which for an author festivals bring, I mean, it's a lovely contact with the real world, with other authors, with readers. Living in Cornwall, you know, one's curious about this sort of, sense of, of, of being out on a, on a slightly ethnically distinct and, and linguistically historically distinct uh, bit of, the, of, of Europe and how it links in with, with, with other lands of, of, of the West, Wales and Ireland and the West of Scotland. It allowed me to sort of develop the idea of that coastline being, being itself a, a, a sort of receptacle of projections, the way we, we, we put ideas and, and hopes and desires and and, and dreams and beliefs out onto the end, edge of the um, the Atlantic, and it's it, it's always had this these traditions of of mythology and 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 story and the sort of the fantastic. So in in a sense, the journey was well. It, it, there were two very very distinct aspects to the journey. One was the the practicalities of getting from A to B in a boat, not being particularly experienced. And the other was was the more sort of ethereal aspects of the coastline, of the stories of the people, the traditions. Uh, and particularly, I, got, I became fascinated by early Irish literature and traditions like the Imrama, the, the 
the, the, the sea voyages of the early saints and the way that they went off in search of, of islands that very often weren't there but 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 became sort of semi-fantastic um, so it was a sort of steering between the real and the imaginary and, and an excuse to sort of explore really what the imagination the role it plays in our lives and the, and the way that it, it attaches itself to particular physical and geographical features and, and islands in particular um, so this this theme of of uh, of story and place is, is something that, that has been recurring in, in in books over the past but all these various themes have, have fed into it it's where I live but it still has for me that sort of sense of discovery always there are places it's only 80 miles long and and, and, and I you think you've been to most places and then suddenly you, you stumble across somewhere and um, and it has this extraordinary capacity to surprise but I spend a lot of time researching and looking into the history and and, and it's 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 uh, the moment I'm 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 interested in, in, in the mining history and the minerals and the way that Cornwall itself is made up of this extraordinary range 14% of the world's minerals are actually found in Cornwall and it's it's a sort of huge geodiverse um, collection of, of sort of minerals and and, and batholiths and, and and elements um, and that's another aspect which is which is worth exploring the social aspect I've got to know a lot of people a lot of people who, who have different connections to Cornwall Cornish themselves for generation people have come in people who have, have written about it and it just it seems this sort of gift that keeps keeps giving if you're if you're curious it will continue to, to supply you with stories and, and surprises okay I'm going to read a short extract from um, from the summer Isles, a voyage of the imagination which is a book about a journey I took a few years ago and um, this is from the the very beginning of the book and it's, uh, it's, it's an introduction to some of the themes and the journey as, as I took it. We were sailing back from Foy. It was late in the year and the October sun lay sharp on the Dodman Point. The boat was bowling along in short seas. I squinted up at the sails, at their cream-coloured arcs against the blue of the autumn sky. At the top of the mast, where the rigging converged, the cups of the anemometer spun in a brisk following wind. With me was my friend Mike, skipper of countless passages in the windier corners of the world. I, on the other hand, had never skippered a boat to anywhere I couldn't reach by lunchtime. Come spring, I was due to sail up the Irish coast to the top of Scotland, single-handed, aiming for a small group of islands that more than 20 years ago I'd vowed to reach in memory of someone I loved. Hence the overnight trip to Foy, so late in the season, grabbing all the tips I could. We'd spent the previous evening going through the electrics and the radio and the navigation equipment and looking at a few changes to make to the halyards and sheeting. And I had carefully taken in the details, filling the pages of a notebook with technical information and all the while I was thinking to myself, what in God's name have I taken on? Now it was morning and the sails were well set and the boat was moving with ease and we were sitting in the sun. I watched the dobman grow larger off the starboard bow, golden fern and pale grass and the steep snub of the rock. Around its foot was a rough of white where the seas rose and fell against the cliff. To the south ran a shifting surface of swells, their backs glittering with jewels. And I watched the, rays, the waves roll on into the distance, becoming smaller as they headed out to the horizon. And I thought to myself, it is for such moments that all the labour of boats is worth it, that everything is worth it. Then I saw something strange. Some 20 miles to the west stood three tall shapes, I couldn't quite make out what they were. Ships, gantries, masts. They were too grey, too bulky. I took my binoculars and looked again. They resembled rocks or skerries, 
but they were elevated like sea stacks. Also, they shouldn't be there. What should be there on that horizon, in that position, was the Lizard Peninsula, the long flat strip of land leading down towards Britain's most southerly point. What I was seeing was a trick of the light, atmospheric refraction. The sun's rays are slowed in the Earth's atmosphere, causing anything that appears far off to distort. Sometimes the light even bends over the horizon to reveal things that are below it, beyond the normal line of sight. That afternoon, the distant skyline of the lizard had been altered and broken. It's not an uncommon occurrence around the coast and has caused some spectacular effects. In his Letters in Natural Magic, addressed to Walter Scott in 1831, David Brewster recorded all sorts of refractive phenomena. Cows suspended in midair, ships appearing upside down. It hadn't been many years since the people of Hastings had spilled out into the town's beach in alarm. The coast of France, generally safe and hidden below the horizon, was suddenly right there, just a few miles away. Through the binoculars, the rocks were altering. They had steepened and narrowed at the base. They now looked like the inverted pinnacles at Fouquet. There were more too. They were multiplying to the south. Some of these ones were larger, their bluish shapes suggesting an entire archipelago. I had the explanation. I knew I was looking at an illusion. But something about the sight of new islands, unfamiliar grounds in a familiar setting, persuaded me to suspend disbelief. I found myself picturing gull-flecked cliffs. I could hear the cries and see caves beneath them and breaking waves. I could see along the coast to where there were beaches and dunes and small houses pale in the sun and people in strange dress moving along grass-scented tracks, driving herds of white cattle. A tiny split had opened in the fabric of the world and I found myself eagerly passing through it. So I'll see you at um, North Cornwall Book Festival.